shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who is fearless. A young loner on a crusade to champion the cause in a world of reckless automobiles. These are my motor vlogs. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Your boy Chris is out on the gold wing today. Beautiful day for a ride. I'm showing about 61 degrees in the cockpit, 58 degrees air temp on the front. Out here on a beautiful 269. Today I'm riding with our very own member, Stephen, all the way from Virginia. What's going on, Stephen? What's up? What's up? Stephen has written all the way down to Memphis from Virginia through the rain, through the storm. That's why we call him the Storm Chaser. What's up, Storm Chaser? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> How was your ride down from Virginia to Memphis? Uh, it wasn't bad. Um, I left the house about 2 a.m. in the morning, and uh, the ride was good for about the first hour. Then all of a sudden, I started getting a few sprinkles. Then, I mean, it cut loose on me. So... I pulled over, put my rain gear on, you know, I kept on trucking. You know, in the middle of the night, pouring down rain, and I kept trucking. You left at 2 a.m. in the morning riding solo. Yep, solo. Yeah. And one thing I can tell you, that my man, Storm Chaser, is a rider. You know, Stephen, a lot of guys out here, they got these motorcycles, and they're nothing but garage trophies. You know, they buy them to and to impress others, but they don't ride it, you know. It looks yep. good sitting in the garage, you know. It looks good on Facebook, snapping a couple of pictures in front of the bike. But do you actually ride it? Do you cross state lines? Do you actually travel? Like I said, Stephen, a.k.a. Storm Chaser, has driven all the way down from Virginia, left at 2 in the morning by himself, rode through the rain, rode through the storms. And I looked at the weather map, and I was – you know, I was even scratching my head on that one there, Storm Chaser. <laughs> like I said, a lot of these guys, man, they get out here and buy these bikes, and they look good, but they don't want to ride it. They don't want to go across state lines. Well, when I bought it, I bought it to ride, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to let the weather hold me back. And you ain't never going to let it hold you back. I ain't going to never do it. Ain't going to ain't gonna do it. That look good, man. You got a car tire on there too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, I got the uh, yes, drive guard on there. Yeah. And also, we didn't make a video, but uh, today, uh, Storm Chaser helped me install on the front of my gold wing. We installed the anti dive shim. The anti dive shim. We didn't make a video, but uh, we are here doing a test. We're going to be meeting up with some, some other riders, getting a chance to meet up with Lady Love and Humdinger and JC. And we're going to take a little ride south. But I have on the anti-dive shim, and uh, it actually feels pretty good there, Storm Chaser. Oh, yeah. I, I figured you would like it. Uh, I got one on mine also. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as soon as I drove mine on, you know, some kind of rough road, I could instantly tell the difference. Just like going through here, how it's hitting those few dips. Right. You know, it just it feels better, you know. Right. A more plush ride. Now, I must admit that J.C. initially told me about the anti-dive shim, and uh, I never I never bought it. I never put it on, and uh, we had a conversation about it, and uh, I finally decided to go out and get it, and uh, we put it on, and I must say that it, it feels pretty good, man. That was a good, a good recommendation as well. Uh, we didn't do an installation video, but we are here doing a test ride on it now. It actually feels pretty good out here on the 269. Uh, I have the fork brace. I have the Centromatic wheel balancers, the BT45 on the front, and the drive guard on the rear. And I must say it actually feels pretty good there, Storm Chaser. Oh, yeah. Must feel pretty good. We riding in luxury. We riding in luxury, man, so... It feels good to be out on the gold wing. Like I said, it's 57 degrees out. It's supposed to warm up today, so hopefully the weatherman 
uh, gets it right. I think they called for like a high in the mid-70s. So it was a good day to be out on the gold wing. But the topic today is do you actually ride your motorcycle? And what type of riding do you do? Are you the type of rider that just ride up the street to the store to buy groceries? Are you doing long-distance traveling? What type of rider are you? Because, you know, everybody that has a motorcycle, in my opinion, is not considered a biker. Just because you have a motorcycle doesn't make you a biker. And I know some people are going, wait a minute, hold on, Chris. Now let me explain. Just because you own a motorcycle don't make you a biker. There's a difference between a biker and a motorcycle owner. So what is the difference between a biker and a motorcycle owner? Well, I'm glad you asked. The difference between a biker and a motorcycle owner is that a motorcycle owner buys the motorcycle. He doesn't actually ride it. If he rides it, he just rides it to the store. He rides it around the corner. He doesn't travel. He doesn't tour. You know, he bar hops. You know, he's not a true biker. He's a motorcycle owner. His name is on the title. Yes, he owns the bike. Yes, he knows how to ride it. But he's not a true biker. Well, what's the difference, Chris? Well, I'm glad you asked. A real biker loves to ride. He needs an excuse to ride. And I don't mean just ride around the corner. He'll commute on the bike. So, for example, you got guys like Dustin down there in Mississippi. Dustin actually commutes on his bike. You got guys like Memphis Mike who commutes daily on the bike. Rain, shine, sleet, snow. They are bikers. They ride it. They travel. They tour with it. I never understand why a motorcycle owner would buy a touring motorcycle, but they're afraid to take it across state lines. They're afraid to put miles on it. You know, you got a 2001 with 8,000 miles on it, and you bought it brand new. You know, I, that's what the Gold Wing is for. It is a luxury touring motorcycle. You know, in my personal opinion there at Storm Chaser, if all you're going to do is bar hop, you might as well buy a bar hop. You might as well buy a little, <laughs> a little Harley 30, uh, 883 or yeah, a uh, little Roadster Sportster. or a little Sportster, man. Get you a little Sportster and just ride up the street to the bar, right. you know. For all that, you might as well buy a scooter. <laughs> yeah, you know, buy, buy a scooter, you know. But if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy a Gold Wing, a touring motorcycle, it is a long distance. Rider. That's what guys do. Guys like Scooter Mitchell out there in Virginia who's riding coast to coast. Guys like Slappy who's riding down to Key West, Florida, you know, and a host of others. They're not the only ones. There's a lot of bikers out there, even yourself, Stephen. Logs a lot of miles. Jason logs a lot of miles. And I know I'm leaving some names out. Humdinger, 70-something years old. Logs a lot of miles. Lady Love, she rides more miles than most men I know. So if you're going to go out and buy a $30,000 motorcycle, a $20,000 touring machine, then take it out. Tour with it. Ride it. You know, that's the, that's the whole purpose of having a touring motorcycle. You know, yep. I, I must admit, I, I can't go everywhere that I would like to go. I haven't had a chance to go. Uh, to some places. I haven't been out to Washington State or I haven't had a chance to go out to the West Coast, but I do ride it. You know, my bike is a uh, 2016 there, Storm Chaser. It's a 2016, and I'm uh-huh. coming, and I'm short of just 70,000 miles. Oh, yeah. That and, means you've been riding. That means I've been riding. I don't get a chance to do a lot of long distance riding. I just got back from a 2,500 mile ride. But the purpose of buying a touring machine is to tour. It's to go long distance, you know. And you made a very good point to me, uh, Storm Chaser. You said point your bike in the direction, and it will make it. It will make it, especially if you got a gold wing. Now, if you got a, you know, you got a little Chinese scooter, you know, that's that's a little bit different. But if you got a gold wing, you got a touring motorcycle, you got a big old giant Yamaha Royal Star Venture, even though it's air cool, if you're running a, BMW KT1600, 
you know, you're riding a big old Harley, ultra classic, you know, a big touring machine. I think that's what touring is for. I think that's the purpose of buying a big touring motorcycle is to go tour. I don't think it's all for bragging rights, but the motorcycle owner, a lot of times, buys these bikes for bragging rights. Yep. They buy them for talking standpoint. They buy them from talking standpoint. And the last point I want to make, don't go join a riding club or a riding group if you're not going to ride. It doesn't even make sense. That's the whole point. Why go join a riding group if you're not going to ride? Why get a golf membership if you're not going to go golfing? I don't, I don't get it. Why go join a bowling league if you're not going to go bowling? Why would you go join a swim team if you're not going to go swimming? That's the whole point yep. of joining a swim team. And that's just my two cents on it. But any day, we're out here riding with Storm Chaser out here on the beautiful 269, heading out to meet up with some other bikers. We're going to take a little ride, Sal. I appreciate you, that Storm Chaser. Storm Chaser came all the way down from Virginia to make the oh, ride, yeah. to make the ride by himself solo. He left out at 2 in the morning and rode through the rain. Not just the rain, but a storm, because I saw it on the weather map myself, and I was even shaking my head at it. <laughs> but that's the difference between a biker and a motorcycle owner. Yeah, and a, and another thing about that storm, this just a you know, heads up to whoever looking to buy rain gear, I would stay away from the frog talk, because me, myself, I got wet, you know, and I had, you know, rain gear on. Now, I got rain gear on. Why am I wet? Exactly. You know, you know, uh, Storm Chaser, I, I wear the, the Thunder Under. Now, I know they discontinued that rain suit. I know they discontinued it, but you probably can still find it. That's not the only rain suit out there. There's a lot of good rain suits. But I've I've actually heard of, of guys having the frog talk that they got wet. Oh yeah, yeah. I so. was wet. I, now I wasn't soaked. Now I I was damp. You know, uh, right down the front of my chest, like where the zipper is. You know, it's like, you know, the the way it's designed, it's not, you know, gonna hold the rain out of the zipper, and like right around my neck, you know, was starting to get wet. But, you know, it was pouring down raining, but that's the point of the rain gear is not to get wet, but right. I got wet. Right. Wow. Now, not not complaining, just explaining. Just explaining two different things. Yep, wasn't going to stop me. I mean, I'm already wet, so I'm going to keep on going. Ain't, you know, it's not like I'm going to turn around and come back like, oh, man, I got wet. No, I'm going to keep going. I got more yeah. clothes in the trailer. Yeah, that's one reason why I pull a trailer there, Storm Chaser, is because if it started raining, I can pull out my rain gear. Some guys can put it in their saddlebags. If if it, if the temperature drops, I can pull out my jacket. Some guys will yep. put jackets in their in their saddlebags. You don't have to have a a trailer, but a trailer just makes your ride more convenient. You know, you're able to take things with you that maybe you don't have to to leave at at the house. You know, if you're going to be doing a long distance trip. But I say just get out there and ride. If you have a big touring motorcycle, get out there and ride. You know, if if, if you are afraid to take a long-distance trip, start out with a short trip. Start out with a 100-mile trip. Work your way up to a 200-mile trip. Keep challenging yourself. Keep challenging yourself. You know, work your way up to a 300-mile trip. You know, just keep challenging yourself. If you do, if you have to, cut that trip up. You know, if you... If you're taking a 500-mile trip and you're not really totally, you know, convinced that, you know, you're not confident, you know, stop at 250 miles, get a hotel room, get back up the next day and finish off the 250. Yep. You know, but keep challenging yourself. You know, if you point your bike in the direction that you're traveling, it will make it. You know, and put, take the things with you that will make your your ride more comfortable. You know, grab your gear. You know, I have, I have I even have a pair of tennis shoes in my saddlebag in my in my trailer, so when I get to my destination, I can take off these boots. Yep. So, you know, challenge yourself, push yourself. You can make it. You know. Yeah, your bike will make it. Just your bike will make it, especially if you're doing the proper maintenance. Especially 
if you've got a good set of tires and you've been doing your oil changes, your bike will make it. And if you have somebody to ride with that can accompany you, that's even better. Yep. How many miles did, how many miles did you ride by yourself, uh, Storm Chaser, down here? It's about, what, 700 maybe? 750. 750 miles solo. Solo. And he left out at 2 in the morning. Yep. Now, I, I would admit this, Storm Chaser. <laughs> I wouldn't even, I, myself, I wouldn't leave out at 2 in the morning. Now, I would probably leave out about 4 or 5 or just before daylight. But you left out at 2 in the morning. Yep. So, you know, that takes a lot of nerves. That takes a lot of courage. But you can do it. Oh, yeah. You know, you can do it. So that's what I want to get across to the people that's watching this video. Don't be don't be afraid. Your bike will make it. I understand some of you probably didn't buy a bike to go touring. I understand some of you didn't buy a bike to drive that far. But don't go join a motorcycle group if you're not going to ride. So just get out here and ride. That's why I'm going to ride mine as long as I can ride it, man. And uh, I don't know. That's what it's all about to me, you know. Yeah. I love riding. A biker needs an excuse to ride. And there's a lot of responsibilities even being a biker, and we'll talk about that in a later video. But we're just talking about riding. You know, yep. you own the most luxurious motorcycles in the world, and you're afraid to go across the state line. You're afraid to go down the road. You can make excuses all day long, or you can just plan to ride. You can you can set your plan in motion. Nothing beats a failure but a try. You know, yep. you have the time. Just just plan to do it. You know, and I even that, that I even you know just even talking makes me think about my. My cousin that bought the Can Am Spider. She's already starting a tour, and she's been riding less than a year. She's already oh. going across state lines by herself. She's already stretching out, and she wants to challenge herself. She said, "Next, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride to Memphis. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the eight hour trip to Memphis." Okay. You know, so just keep challenging yourself. If, you know, if women can do it, the men can do it. And I know. Yeah. I know the men are not going to be outdone by the women. I don't know. Yeah. You take a lady like Lady Love, she all ride the men. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, when I first bought my bike, I came off of a uh, uh, Suzuki Bergman. I had a 650 Suzuki Bergman. I came off of that, and I always wanted a gold wing. And right. I finally found one I liked, and, you know, I could actually get it. So. Right. I bought this Gold Wing, and uh, my first trip, you know, just to you know, learn to bike a little bit. Right. I've done about a, you know, about a hundred mile round trip, you know, just to get the feel of the bike. Right. Well, my second trip, I went up to the tail of the Dragon. Right. I rode all the way up to the Dragon from my house, and then turned around and went all the way back home. Right. I, st I stayed on this Gold Wing for roughly 17 hours.